What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Smoking Tire Podcast. This episode is brought to you by Lemonade Health. Look, the new year is a great time to check in on your general health and well-being, especially in the middle of a pandemic. But still, you don't necessarily want to have to go to a doctor's office, chill in a waiting room for half an hour, deal with all the annoying restrictions put in place. That's why virtual medicine is where it's at. Lemonade Health is a virtual medical office providing you affordable health care without the need for insurance. Lemonade's medical team can treat anything from erectile dysfunction, anxiety to depression, insomnia, hair loss, high blood pressure, and more. Lemonade is providing our listeners with 50% off your first order of any ED medication. Getting started is very easy. All you have to do is visit LemonadeHealth.com slash tire, and that's not spelled like the beverage. It's spelled A-I-D, LemonAIDHealth.com. You just fill out the online questionnaire, and their medical team will review and get you your medication fast. Delivery is fast, free, and comes in discreet packaging. Visit LemonAidHealth.com slash Tire, T-I-R-E, for 50% off your first order of ED medicine with Lemonade Health. We are also brought to you by Dylan Optics Sunglasses. Do you know those beautiful sunglasses you see me wearing in every video? The ones with the matte lenses? They don't just look different, guys. They work different. Dylan Optics is like HD life. Their NIR lens technology makes seeing in the bright light bearable. Honestly, I'm out in the desert. I'm up on mountains. It's hot. It's sunny. It's dry. I live on the West Coast, so with driving home in the sunset, I'm always going right into the sun. Dylan Optics keep my eyes from hurting at the end of basically every single day. And if you go to our website, thesmokingtire.com, click on the Partners tab, and under there, you'll see the Dylan Optics banner. If you click on that link, to get your pair of Dylan Optics, I will send you a free smoking tire t-shirt for every pair of Dylan Optics sunglasses you order. Get two pairs, get two t-shirts. Go to thesmokingtire.com, click on the Partners tab, and use that link to get your Dylan Optics sunglasses, the official eyewear of the Smoking Tire podcast. And of course, this show is brought to you by Tradecraft Farms. Follow them on Instagram, tradecraft underscore farms. The most delicious, scrumptious, potent, delightful ganja that you can buy legally in the state of California, and it's all I smoke, folks. Tradecraft Farms, ugh, these guys, they know. They're not, it's not shady. They're professionals. They care about science, and they have just the most fabulous product. Their Instagram, whoever handles their macro shots over at the Tradecraft underscore farms Instagram knows how to take a pretty bud shot. Um, I brought our friend Thaddeus down there uh, to check out the facilities while he was in town. And just every time I go in there, blown away by the quality of that product, the clean, the cleanliness, the consistency. It's excellent. If you're in California, get it wherever you get your retail ganja at. If you're not in California, just give Tradecraft underscore farms a follow on the gram. And I'm going to be having a meetup at one of their dispensaries some point in the summer. So look out for that. Tradecraft underscore farms, the official ganja of the Smoking Tire podcast. All right, folks, on today's episode, Daddy Doug is in the house. Doug DeMuro calling in from his garage in San Diego in front of a very overpriced Mercedes. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Doug's G-Wagon rules. Uh, he needs no further introduction. He's done very, very well for himself in videos, and he's got carsandbids.com, which will exit him from the gig economy in short order. Doug DeMuro on the Smoking Tire Podcast. Ah, uh, Doug is here, and we are live, and that is the show. I'm over here now. I switched sides in the studio. Turns out we built a studio setup that was really designed to have people opposite the table talking to each other, not designed for Zoom calls. Fuck me as I spill. Zach, will you paper towel me as I spill my lemon LaCroix on the table? Yeah, hang on. Uh, blah. So anyway, now optimized for Zoom on this side of the table. Doug, hello. Welcome back. Hello. What's Thank going on, buddy? 
I think you were last here 36 hours before you launched Cars and Bids. <laughs> that is right. We were, I was trying to line that up, and it just didn't quite it didn't quite work out. You could have whatever. just, like, NDA'd me. Like, I would have signed the thing, and we could have done it to time the launch of your, like, brand new yeah, secret business. Don't you remember, though? I had, we had already pushed it back, like, three times because... I was going to come to LA and there were the riots that were going on and it oh, yeah. terrible because it kept, it kept being put. I was like, you know what? I, I can't push it again on this guy. I have to do this. So I just uh, had to have So we did it. Well, and then, and then it was like, oh yeah, the secret business he didn't want to talk about auction site <laughs> goes up like the next fucking day. How about that? Wow. I spilled well, you so know. much LaCroix. <laughs> Can I tell you something? Can I tell you something about eating and drinking on this podcast? It's do not you know? Well that people come up to me on the street to this day and they talk to me about how I used to bring brownies. Do you remember this? How I how used to bring brownies. People literally walk up to me on the street and say, hey man, I love your videos. By the way, why did you bring those brownies onto the Smoking Tire podcast? This is and you know, I just think that eating on a podcast is completely acceptable. <laughs> oh, <laughs> giant bag of peanut M&Ms? That Crunchy. is choice. That, wow. that is a man of taste right there. Thank you can you. trust someone with a bag of M&M's that size in a Previa t-shirt. <laughs> Did he eat chips last time? You can't trust that guy. Who the fuck can you trust? Now, you're thinking of Han from <laughs> Fast and the Furious. We had, uh, we had, we, you know, we had uh, Sung Kang from Fast and the Furious on the show, and he said that his character eats chips on, in there because his character in the film Better Luck Tomorrow was like a chain smoker, and they brought him over, but they didn't want him to smoke cigarettes because of, of the kids. Because of the right. kids. Um, so fucking you're like an entrepreneur now. You're not just like a guy who stands in front of behind cars and does this anymore, huh? I'm like you. I'm like you. Well, and you know, it's also it's also like, funny I'm because fake. Last I'm time, only playing. No, you have a very legitimate business as well. You know, which YouTube is not. You know, last time <laughs> No, it is not. YouTube is a YouTube's a casino. You're up. Yeah. You're fucking down. <laughs> Last time I was on here, you were giving me crap because I had figured out some algorithm thing and hadn't told you about it. Correct. But the, uh, what yes, I yes, I was your research monkey, if I recall, and it was it was like it was like MK Ultra. Honestly, it was against my consent. <laughs> <laughs> what I couldn't say, of course, at the time was that you were also my inspiration because you went out and you took this following that you had and morphed it into this actual business off the web. And so, whereas I kind of piggybacked off some of your channel's decisions, you actually helped convince me that this was maybe the right move for what I should do next. And then you watched how annoying it was to build a fucking building, and you went, maybe my business should be virtual. Well, that, <laughs> that, we, that conversation was had, yes. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, you know, I have... Uh, I have never tried to start a totally virtual business, so I don't have any any background on it at all. I mean, presumably, you said, well, there's a lot of overflow that's not making it onto Bring a Trailer right now, and there's another room, another level, where I could pick up those sloppy seconds and make, make a little Dougie cash. Yeah, I mean, I think that Bring a Trailer more and more has gravitated towards these like real high i mean i get their emails and you know it's like hey we sold this lamborghini mira and we sold this 300 yeah. sl and and i mean i think there's a lot of people and i can sense sort of this feeling that like you know hey what happened to the guys who have the twenty thousand dollar budgets you know or who want like a i don't know a gti or a focus st or that kind of car and and those are the cars that i like you know that's the stuff i'm into is the 80s and up those are the cars and I just kind of felt like maybe there was a place that was could be devoted just to people who are going to be, you know, buying and selling cars in that realm. Sort of a younger audience, maybe make a little better user experience to bring in a younger audience who's more used to dealing with more modern websites. I don't know. That was just kind of the, the thought that we had when we were making it. And, well, and I, I think it conversations with sense. a few different people that had talked about similar concepts. Yeah. And some are still out there trying it. Uh, I didn't expect one to be yours. I uh, I'm 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 not I don't want to say I'm shocked at how well you're doing, but the growth seems to be pretty rapid. Yeah, we've been surprised. I've been surprised. I mean, when so when we launched the site that first day after, after we did the last podcast, which was June, 
I assume I, I had two big fears, which was number one, it wouldn't work. The site would just break. And then if that kind of, if that <laughs> like happens, literally the site would just f- literally not work. I mean, I don't know. I don't know concern. how that stuff works. So I'm like terrified. And we have people who know what they're doing, but I don't know what the hell I'm doing. No, it's so a real concern. That, Shit doesn't yeah, work because, like all the time. And, and as you know, if that breaks, people in, immediately like, oh, this thing is a piece of crap. Like it doesn't, you know. There's Obamacare. This <laughs> right? Right. You remember that. Like that website rollout for Obamacare was such a disaster. And even, you know, factoring in the benefits that it had, everybody still remembers. Yeah. Today, people still that today are wall. talking about so this horrible 48 second. hours of website that from 20, 2009. Mm-hmm. People right. are still like, the website didn't right. work. It's like, yo, they fixed it. Chill. Right. <laughs> that's how you talk, that's how you talk it, points work. Like two weeks later. Yeah. yeah, no. But that's the kind of thing people remember. That's exactly it. And so yeah. that I was big, fearful of that. And then that didn't happen. And then I was also fearful that cars just wouldn't. People would, there wouldn't be enough bidders, and cars would just no sale, no sale, no sale, no sale, and that didn't happen yeah. either. And I think once people realized, hey, this is an alternative for me. Hey, here's a place where I can go. Maybe you know cars that are more high speed, eighties, nine stuff that isn't you know really vintage, you know classic stuff. Maybe this can be where I go. And so we've yeah, it's grown, it's grown well, and we've all been really happy about it. So, I feel so like far, it was so that good. first like the first like three weeks you need to develop. Though enough people there in the very, very beginning for the first like thirty cars to sell. Otherwise, you're fucking hosed, right? Right, right. And yeah. and 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 you need. That's when all the eyes are on it too. So you need yeah. that those those sales because everybody's coming in. Oh, what is this? Oh, is this actually going to work? Oh, here's this guy trying this thing. And so you gotta have that success right away. So the first week, all the cars launch and we're like, we got a lot of submissions. We're pretty happy. But the, the, the big fear was the second week when the cars are closing. And that's like when we were really nervous. And so we're sitting there like, oh man, <laughs> I yeah. hope these things sell. And by and large, they did. And then they just kept rolling in and rolling in pretty much. Yeah. Do you find the um, the value or the, the money that they're bringing in is... Uh, you know, market appropriate against somewhere like Haggerty price values or something. If you're, if it's a more collectible car, yeah. And and truthfully, the sellers have all been really happy. So our sale rate over since we started is over eighty percent. Um, and over the last sixty days, it's almost ninety percent, which is insane. Everything selling, everything is getting a ton of bids. Sellers have been thrilled. Um, you know, it's yeah, we're we've been really, really, really thrilled with with everything. And I mean, I don't know, we have a lot of repeat sellers who keep coming back for more. So clearly, you know, they're thinking we got one guy who only sells no reserve and has sold like 35 cars with us and just keeps Is he going. a dealer? So, I mean, he's got to be. Yeah, a dealer, yeah, right? yeah, 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 yeah. But, you well, know, no he's, reserve he's is really is the way to go. Yes, yes. And I beg people to understand that. And it's difficult. But we get people who want like a four thousand dollar reserve on a Land Cruiser. And I'm like. Oh, it's just, it's a fight. Every day is a fight. <laughs> no, it's, I, there's, if mentally, if you, if the car is gone, mentally, I'm ready for this car to be gone and I want to sell it. It's so nice. It's so liberating to go, no reserve. Just let it yeah. fly. The market well, will decide. There's a bunch of benefits too. We also, we're getting more bids and more comments on no reserve cars every time. Yeah. Um, and... There's just something mentally there when the, the bidder, it seems to me, based on the success rate, but there's just something mentally there, like this thing is selling. You're yeah. not just sitting there bidding and bidding and like maybe at the end, oh, I put in 20 bids and then oh, no sale. Yeah. This thing is selling today. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You there's know that, you, that your, your, your bid, your, inv- your time investment will be, or someone's time investment will be rewarded. Right. You know, it's right. not a dip my toe in the water thing. Yeah, and yeah. That's the we get, worst. We get sellers. It, we get sellers send us a note and we say, look, you know, for this car, they get like a high mile E36 M3. We say, for this car, it's going to sell for like eight grand. We'd rather do no reserve. And they reply and say, well, what if what if it doesn't get any bids and only sells for $1,000? Would that happen? We get those people say that every day. And I'm like, that's going to happen. I will <laughs> put a car and it only is going to sell for $1,000. Yeah. You're like, <laughs> I, I, have, I see every car and I have money. If it's cheap enough, right. I'm fucking buying it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But people That's don't funny. get that. I can't. I cannot talk them into understanding that. I just. It's. That's it's, hilarious. I mean, a lot of a lot of them do. Something like forty percent of our cars are no reserve. But I, if it was up to me, when I was thinking about the concept, I initially thought it as we should do all the cars no reserve and just everything just sells. I mean, Barrett Jackson was like Barrett, that for a long Barrett, time. Barrett. I mean, yeah, they got away for it for a while. I forget what year they changed it, but they changed it very quietly. 
Yeah. They did not make yeah. a big deal out of going, hey, by the way, every auction might not sell now. <laughs> right. Yeah. Gives, it it gives Craig thing. Jackson an opportunity to buy everything later. <laughs> It was uh, it was cool, and you just knew, and it was electric. You just knew, and it still is. By and large, most of their stuff is still in the reserve, and you just knew stuff was selling. And I, I still wish we had done that concept, but I think we would have had trouble convincing a lot of yeah, sellers, yeah, yeah, especially yeah, yeah. of nicer stuff. That's fu- It's funny to have to have, you know, it's like that, what's that 80-20 rule? You spend 80% of your time dealing with the 20% of your customers, right? Right. Uh, and, and, the, and I can relate to having to convince somebody that an impossible scenario is not going to happen. Right, you know what I mean? Right. What if this car only gets 500? It's like, it's just not going to happen, man. Like, right. So here at my place at West Side, you know, we have these quad stackers. Everybody. But what if I come in and my car's on the very top? Okay, let's, let's workshop this together, and I will explain to you how that scenario is a literal impossibility. Starting right. with a very binary, does your car run? Yes, no. <laughs> yes, it's not on top. Let's start there. You know what I mean? Like, so it's, uh, yeah, you have to convince someone of, uh, of impossible scenarios that even like in a, you know, in, a, in a worst case, like that might just be what it'd be. <laughs> You know right. I mean? Your I, E36 I, might be $1,000, sir. I hate well, to tell you. There is a component of that, too. Like, I, what I want to tell people is, look, dude, if you present it well, yeah. you know, if it's, if it's nice, if you take great photos are everything. If you mm-hmm. take a couple of videos, turn it on, you know, walk around it. If you do that, you don't have anything to worry about. You have yeah. no fears at all during the-, the And engage you know, the, the questions, you know, yeah, the, yeah, yeah. the, the questions the, that right. are asked in good faith anyway, not the shit yeah. baggy questions, because you get those yeah, too. Yeah. Oh, yeah. What I love about cars and bids is that every car has uh, Doug's take. And <laughs> a Doug's take, you know, Doug's a very cheery guy, but you can't only list cars on cars and bids that Doug personally likes, but what's he gonna do? Shit on the car in the Doug's take? <laughs> So he's always got to find something. Some careful language of some of us. Yeah. <laughs> so, so occasionally, as I'm browsing, you know, because it's in my it's at my daily repertoire to go to cars and bids now, because uh, oh, there's some nice. really interesting stuff. I I I am a real I'm a fucking Columbo for flowery prose that's trying to cover up the fact <laughs> that you secretly kind of ate this car. <laughs> it's rare. Though, I, most of the cars on the site I'm really into. And you can see it's kind of embarrassing because sometimes I get super excited over cars that are going to sell for four grand. Like <laughs> we had a Hyundai Stellar on the site the other day, which was a Canada only, like a high end Hyundai. And it was being <laughs> sold what? by a dealer a in Canada. It was, it was called the Stellar. It was a rebadge of a Ford with a Mitsubishi engine. It was like Hyundai's first ever car on Canada. Hyundai entered Canada before they entered the US market. They were, were going to try it there first because Canada oh, liked wow. smaller cars. Yes, this thing. And so I like. Oh shit! Out of that's this like thing. a fucking Mercury Lynx, isn't it? It is a homely vehicle. It looks vehicle. like that. I think that's a. I ugly. think that's a rebadged Mercury Lynx from the '80s because my parents well, had no, one of those. But it's rear wheel drive. Was wasn't the oh. Lynx an Escort? Yes, it was. Oh, this might have been something else. Oh, I don't know. So that's a weird looking shows car. Up. And I mean, I flip out about this in the Doug's take. Meanwhile, we got like, you know, the 911s and M3s and M5s, and I'm like, you know, these are cool cars. But this thing, I've never even seen one of these in person. But that's, you know, that's yeah, you wrote like, fi- right, you wrote like, 500 like, words there. I, guess. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you got to spend a lot of, you probably have to spend, if you're writing a Doug's take for every single car, I mean, that's got to take right. a decent chunk of time. Yeah, you know, you just you just said it's your favorite part. It has become my personal hell. But but actually, the truth is, I like seeing the cars, every car, because I, I am not intimately involved in every single decision. So we have a guy who does a lot of the intake now. I was doing all of that for the first six months, and now it's kind of switching. No, and so I don't necessarily see. Nightmare. Yeah, believe me. <laughs> No, but but I don't the, necessarily see each car, and so now it's nice to, you know, I get my little thing, and I get to see, okay, well, this looks pretty nice, you know, this will go up, and so it's yeah, nice yeah. for me to be able to see that I, this is coming, that kind of thing. Oh, look at that. Look at that. Look at that beautiful. But that, honestly, though, but if you go back to our conversation that we had in June, you know, before I knew you were doing this, by the way, and some of the, some of what we said, I think, still applies, um, you know, the Doug's take eliminates the ability to multiply beyond you. You yeah, are the bit. limiting. If yeah. you have to be involved in a hundred words on every listing, that's going to be the limiting factor. Eventually, you will not yeah. be able to write a Doug's take for everyone. You're going to have to yeah. replicate yourself, like Unless in multiplicity. You copyright Doug's take, and then it doesn't have to be by Doug. It's a product oh. that's just created by cars and bids. <laughs> 
You heard it here from so Zach. Far, so far, it's been okay. But yeah, I mean, if we're it's running 25, long. 30 days, yes, exactly. it's going to become a problem for sure. Yeah. I mean, I don't know what the hell that is. But no, yeah, it sounds a, like a lot of writing. If we're doing that well, then I'll, you know, that's a good thing and we'll figure something out. We, we've talked about, like, if it gets to that point, maybe there's a generic paragraph you put in for an E92 M3 that I say every time. And then maybe I write, like, a sentence about that, that one. one. That and sounds, then, you know, we'll yeah, that sounds It would be right. funny. I mean, it'd be terrible, but it'd be kind of funny if it gets so big, like the site gets so big, but the cars that are being posted there for some reason get so cheap that <laughs> your profit per car is like equal to what you got paid when you were blogging for Jalopnik. And you're, like, you're making $20 for, for Doug's take, but you're like, fuck, all we're selling uh, are these I didn't Honda do both stuff. sides of this math. <laughs> These it cars is, are so interesting. It is impossible. It, it is impossible, Zach, for me to earn as little as I did when I was blogging for Jalan. Let me be clear. I bet. <laughs> it is literally impossible. But um, no hard I, feelings. You guys it. had to be. I mean, you guys had to be basically like you know, pretty much instantly. I don't know. If, I don't know about profitable, but your 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 statement must have looked nice pretty instantly, right? You're doing pretty good right away. Yeah, right? I mean, right, because the cars pretty much came in from day one. So we did a big announcement and. We were all nervous. Uh, I mean, I was terrified we just wouldn't get any cars. But we did this promo at the start where we gave $1,000 to the first, like, 25 cars, I think, that were on the site, and then, like, 500 to the next 25. And so, I mean, we got, like, 1,000 submissions the first week. So it was it was just oh, yeah. flying from day one. And so they obviously they slowed down after that. But, you know, they, they kept coming and kept coming. So, yeah, I mean, right away we, we already, already were starting to earn money, and we went out and started to hire people and that sort of thing. Oh, that's good. Do you, are you do yeah. you have are you gonna have an actual like office somewhere? Or is it all gonna be virtual forever? You think? This is a point of contention. My partner wants an office, and I think objectively, most business. I mean, I think it's. Hard. I don't want an office because I haven't worked in an office in ten years, and I just don't see the benefit really. But I think there are people who work better in an office, and I think a team can, in some cases, work better in an office. And we're a small team. But one of the problems is during COVID, we haven't paid much attention to where people are, so we've hired all of them. So we have a guy in Albuquerque, we have a guy in North Carolina, we got people in Northern California. It hasn't really, I, I don't even know how many people would be in this office from four yeah, or five, yeah. you know. But I'll I don't tell know. you I mean, what, kinda... having a shop, dude, having a place, <laughs> I don't yeah. know what your situation is, you know, if, you're, if your wife also is working from home or, or whatever, whatever your situation is. But, but for me, like, just in terms of having an office, like, having a place, like, where that's staffed, you know what I mean, where I can, like, send stuff and press cars can get dropped off and I don't have to be there, you know, and, right. like, I don't have to worry about boxes that need to get signed for or special documents or all that. It's amazing. It's so yeah, yeah. it's so good, dude. It's yeah, so good to not be is, thinking about that. The difference is you own the shop and the and the land and the building, and so we're looking at like sure. leases, and that's an ex, it's, you know it's, it's Alicia expense. Alicia it's room over here. You want to you want to you want to come yeah, over? Yeah, that's <laughs> you know we don't currently have anyone in LA, but I think we would all be willing to make that long drive up to LA just <laughs> just <laughs> just to be here. Yeah, you know actually the most people think they live in LA. Are, be just fine, I suppose. The number of people who reach out and say, "Hey, man, I'm in LA. Do you want to grab lunch? Do you want to? You want to get lunch? I know, I know, you're in Southern California, and I'm That's like, so weird. I'm not getting lunch. I'm four hours from you. That's so <laughs> weird. I guess, I guess, if you don't come to California very often, it does seem like San Diego is very close. It's not. That's exactly it's not. Mean. Every no. time I drive to San Diego, it's it's a fucking nightmare. It's the worst. That's right. God forbid you have to go to a concert. Uh, that play, what's the concert venue? It's always got the worst. Some bed re- sleep train, mattress firm. It's always sponsored by a betting company. You know what I'm talking about? Um, the, the sports arena? No, no, no. It's like an amphitheater outdoors that's basically in fucking Mexico. I think it's called the <laughs> Sleep Train Amphitheater or the Mattress yeah, Firm. It's, it's something like that. It is called something like that. It's one of the most, It's it, the sound there is incredible and the weather's always nice. So it's just one of the greatest places you could ever go to see a concert. But right. you think in, you're in LA and you go, oh yeah, it's like 87 miles. Like, what's the big deal? It's like, bro, on a fucking Thursday at five, that's four hours. <laughs> like, that's, yeah, people don't get it. It literally is four hours. It literally yeah. is. With, with yeah. traffic, with COVID, it's been easier. But with, it, with traffic, it's four hours. No joke, one way. The L.A. road system, now that we've wound back the traffic about 30 years, is oh, shockingly unreal. efficient. Really yeah. nice. Like, oh, this makes yeah. so much sense. I just got to the valley I have 20 started, minutes. 
Right. I have started coming up and shooting more and more videos in LA because I can now. Like, yeah. there's people who reach out with cars that I would look at the, the list and go, yeah, you know, it's a cool car, but it's, I'm not going to drive four hours one way. But now it's like, yeah, I'll drive an hour and 50 minutes. You yeah. know, to, <laughs> that's all right. I'll do, so I've been, doing, I've been up in LA, you know, once a week, maybe trying to shoot. Well, what the fuck? See your, come see your boy. This is bullshit. I'm just saying. <laughs> Why are we talking to you on the phone? My no, whole life. My whole life is contactless now. I know. People, it's weird. People make fun of me for this. Do you get crap from people? No, not really. No. I mean, uh, I th no. I think everyone is just trying to understand everyone else's level of comfort. And I have some friends that are not taking really very many precautions at all. And I have other friends that are barely leaving their house. And I'm trying yeah. to make everybody feel okay about themselves while not getting stupid COVID. What are you going to do? Yeah. But no, right. I mean, fortunately, you know, we have this technology. We can use it. And then and when we don't have to anymore, we won't. Yeah. It is what it is. Yeah. It's better. It's better to be in person. But like fucking SEO is the same. <laughs> <laughs> right, and, and at the end of the day, it's not all that really, really matters. A hundred percent. <laughs> no, uh, you know, now that we're now that the podcast channel is its own channel, though, I mean, we uh, definitely helped with growth of the main channel. It's not fully about turned around. We're not getting the numbers we, we, we once did and maybe we never will again. But like, at least it's like the 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 metrics are going in the right direction. And the podcast, you know, videos are getting more views than they than they ever have. Yeah. So that's it's worth as out. Doug predicted, because he knows how all the algorithms work. He just didn't tell us. Oh, right. Right. As, Doug, as, as the DeMuro study shows <laughs> previously I unpublished. <laughs> I will tell you this, Matt, I have been getting fewer views and most of the people I talk to have been getting fewer views. And I think actually there's a factor here of office workers who are no longer in offices. And I think that a lot of the people who were watching our videos before were people who were wasting time for like 30 yeah. minutes. trying, to, And now they're at home. And when they got 30 minutes to kill, they like, you know, go take the dog for a walk or go play with their kid or turn on the TV. I mean, they don't need to do like a... a Thing, you know, like a Good pretend point. I'm still on the computer so my boss doesn't know. <laughs> and so, yeah, no escapism and then no no mass transit commuting, right? They're not watching on the on the subway or on the right. on the train or whatever. Exactly. Yeah, that's definitely exactly. possible. My, I mean, I don't know. Uh, my wife works from home and has a has a what I would consider a pretty important job. Her she literally talks or listens to a computer for nine hours straight. And her actual like kind of office free social time is pretty much gone. It's just meeting, 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 meeting. Yeah. It actually seems terrible. Yeah, I know. You know, it's interesting. A lot of people have enjoyed this working from home, but there's a couple things that have happened. I mean, one, you need to be really disciplined to be able to adequately work from, but also, mm -hmm. yeah, the fatigue of doing these. I, I don't do it much. I mean, your po podcast occasion I do it, but I don't do much Zoom. But man, people, I must be hard. I can I can only imagine. She might, I mean, Hannah started this job virtually. Has never met anyone in, in person, oh. which is fucking. I mean, imagine I I can't even imagine how strange that must be. Okay, yeah, this, you're now this person's boss. They're like wherever. Right. Like what? Right. But that's it's a year now. This has been going on. So like probably this is going to be more and more. That's interesting. I never really thought about that. Yeah. <laughs> to be honest. And she has really weird commentary on it. She's like, I have no idea how tall this person is. <laughs> Like, is this person five foot one or six foot eight? I have no clue, you know, and really, you know, you can really judge someone based on their background. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, oh, their house is like, mm, that's like, oh, yeah, or whatever. Or you like, you hate them because their fucking dog is around all the time and barking. And you're like, you don't, know, this appears like it be the genius. It could be fucking Einstein, but their dog is barking and you're like, fuck. I learned know? the value of the virtual background because I was on a call with Haggerty at like, 6 a.m. you know west coast time everyone's yeah. on the east coast and i'm like bleary eyed and like i yeah. hate all of you but i understand why we're here yeah and at the end of the call i look like at my own background and i have a closet door open and shirts <laughs> hanging and like a ladder i was like yeah. i look like shit oh, yeah. <laughs> that's that's why the virtual background exists. yeah yeah exactly yeah sure. oh my god yo um you want to talk about cars for a second because i i want to talk about your defender because we had it and loved it and you weren't here when you were yeah. supposed to be here because you drove your Defender 7,500 miles, which ex explainable. Uh, and then yeah. I also just had Roma, and you just had Roma as well. You had the yeah. silver one, and I had the blue one. Did you like well, Roma? Well, I, I borrowed it from a dude. But, yeah, I thought it was, honestly, I thought it was great. Um, 
I'm not the biggest fan of how it looks. You know, I have to tell you, I have never in now it's been seven and a half years doing this and 400 plus videos. I have never had a car that was as so opinion splitting on the design. I huh. got comments back and forth on Twitter. That is the ugliest Ferrari I've ever seen. The next comment would be that is Ferrari's most beautiful car since the Daytona. And I'm talking about like that was frequent. Like there were 50 hate and 50 love. There was no like middle. And I've never had some. I personally like how it looks, but I do think it's a little derivative. I remember when I was a kid, you saw a Ferrari and you knew you were looking at a Ferrari. And I think Roma, you maybe think it's an F type or you think like, what is that? And I don't know. What did you think of it? I thought it was a 94. Um, it objectively drove fabulously. Stupid fast, would break the tires loose through three gears if you turned off traction control. Yeah. Um, really comfortable, rode really well. I mean, mine had the mag ride. And um, yeah. in general, like, built really well, you know, built nicely and, and, and easy to use. I hated the automatic gearbox tune. If you didn't put it in manual, it just would find the highest gear at any moment. And yeah. here's my here's my option sheet. I made some notes. Oh. Um, and I was personally insulted at the fact that uh, for $218,000 base price, magnetic ride is optional, and it's $5,500. Uh, and Apple CarPlay. I watched the press presentation video for this thing. It was like 42 minutes of Italian flowery prose and shit. Like 20 minutes of it was on the uh, human-machine interface. The all-new HMI. All-new. The new digital direction of Ferrari. Apple CarPlay, $4,219. Get the fuck out of here. I mean, they're just fleecing people at that, at that point. You design yeah. this whole new system, all these screens, right. the touchpads, and all this shit, but like, oh, sorry, you wanted to connect your iPhone to this? Right. 4200 sucker. Yeah, especially at that money. I mean, charging more for it is already suspect, but charging four grand is insane. I mean, so Le Lexus charges $200 for CarPlay, and, and for the same experience in a Ferrari, it's right. 42. It's 21 times the cost. <laughs> <laughs> Why do they even bother quoting a base price for that car? There's I 10 or 12 know. things you simply must get. Like you could not, like the dealer wouldn't probably even let you order the car without some of that stuff because someday agree. it'll come back to them and they'll be like, we, we need to have it well spec. Like it's, you know, we're not going to do this. Yeah. Um, Wheel, you know, wheels well, are you, optional. Look, I put, I put, on point, my... why, not just, why not just claim the car costs 140 grand and say wheels are optional? Seriously. <laughs> why not do that? What, what's the, what's the like point? The, like the, like uh, the, like the fucking Hellcat with the one seat. Oh, you wanted a passenger yeah. seat. Oh, sorry. Well, but you're right though. So on this on this spec sheet, I put a bunch of uh, checks and X's. I, I I put things that are mandatory and then things that can t totally go and just be abs. And I eliminated, without honestly, without changing anything on the car, I eliminated forty eight thousand dollars. And I kept all of the the important performance stuff, all the important comfort stuff, and some of the aesthetic carbon fiber. And I still hacked 48K off of this thing. I mean, wow. you know, I like that you can have it your way. You know, I like that it's like that, but it's, some of this stuff is a little crazy. Oh, wait, what was the sticker? What was the sticker on that one? $316,000. It was wow. <laughs> $99,000 in options on it. You know what's crazy about that? You can get a lot of used Ferrari for 316. You could go buy a nice 488 for 316 and have a really impressive car. Not that Roma is not impressive, but that's a no, lot. No, I mean, you can get a mint F12 for yeah. that money. You might even be able to get a used 812 for that money. Yeah, I think probably um, you can. You could probably get a great FF or Lusso, almost new, for that money. Um, yeah. But it look, it's a really nice car, and some of this shit is pretty cool. That passenger co-driver display, did the one you played with have that? Mine didn't even have the key, the cool key that you had. What key did it have? It, it, it's just like that key, except it doesn't have the Ferrari logo on the back. It's just leather. Oh, really? Even that's optional. It's not on my, it's not on my sheet. I was surprised by that because I thought it was standard and necessary in all the cars, but I mean... You can watch my vid. Like it's not. It doesn't. They, How it interesting! Doesn't, they, I wonder uh, if it's part of. Oh no! You know, you, no, no, no! I just remembered. Joe from Ferrari told me you get one. You're, you, there's two. You get one key when you order the car, and another one comes with it. Oh. 
So the guy probably yes. had the two keys. I asked like about it. He said, order, they're like, here's your, really? here's your key hmm. so that, you know, you can feel good until it We're going to need to follow up on that. The key I had was super, super sick. That Ferrari oh, badge. I, I, that wanted, I wanted to check that out. Although I suspect that's going to be all the Ferrari keys going forward. Like when all the other cars are redesigned, they'll all probably have that. So yeah, yeah. that's in five years, we're going to look back at that and call it stupid. But it, now it, right now it's like super cool. Yeah. Yeah. It was awesome. And, um, and I really liked how considering it's a, you know, an under four liter V8, when you put the long, Exhaust, exhaust pipes on it to make it. I look like I'm milking a cow right now. To make it a rear a rear exit exhaust, that added length of like pipe to me. It made it sound a little like a Ferrari 550, which I kind of really liked, yeah. especially at the low revs. Yeah, it's. Well, I think you nice nailed it yesterday. The I pipes go it. under the car also, so yeah. you're, you're you are. Yeah present for more of the sound yeah, you know, yeah in the mid engine yeah. the f8 it's just all happening behind you yeah. that's why they have a they have a pipe running from one of the turbos into the cabin in the like f8 the trumpet pipe the trumpet like, pipe yeah, the yeah. hot pipe to like bring some of the residents in because yeah, otherwise yeah. you know it's all behind you sorry yeah. doug the thing that really impressed me about it was the um responsiveness of that throttle and that engine you know that engine has gotten some some negative comments in part because of the sound but also because it's not an na anymore and you know blah 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 but I don't know, man. I've driven that engine now in a bunch of different Ferraris. It drives well. And that car, you you just didn't have to do anything. You just tap the throttle a little. It felt like an NA engine. It, there was no lag. I, yeah. I was really impressed. Uh, I really like that engine in the in the California T, the Portofino, and the Roma. And I prefer the NA engine in the mid-engine car. Yeah, I kind of prefer the NA engine too. But I, I don't think there's that much... Uh, people complain like it's the end of the world, you know, like this is the end yeah. of Ferrari. I don't know <laughs> no, it's not. That. The cars still go really fast. Um, yeah, right. And you can buy. I mean, have you what? What have you have you driven anything recently that was like so fast? You were like, how do they even sell this to people? Uh, I've dr I drove a Chiron. I did a Devo oh, yeah. <laughs> last month, and I did a what? I did a Chiron this month, the Pure Sport. And um, it was actually funny because I did the Chiron Pure Sport and then the next day I did some other, like, oh, I did the um, 812 GTS the next day. Oh, yeah. And driving the 812, yeah. it was like, uh, like I, that's an incredibly fast car, but that sh the Chiron is like the crazy thing that you will experience in your entire life. You floor it it's like the world is ending. I mean, <laughs> you, you have to go ready for it. And you're, it, the thing you're driving is so expensive. That car... It's, it's, it doesn't terrify me that they sell it to people because it seems like a very competent vehicle, unlike some of these weird hyper cars. But like, oh my God, that car is so fast. It's indescribable to, even people who have driven a 458, like who like have a 458, yeah. it's indescribable the next level. It's like the difference between an S-Class and a Rolls. People are like, well, why would you spend another 300 grand? Well, because <laughs> yeah, the yeah. difference is actually, you notice it, you you get it if you're in that world. And that's how the, the Chiron is too, it's yeah. so insane. That was kind of how it was with like the Hennessy Venom GT, where it was yeah. like, holy fuck. Like when you would upshift and it would pull even harder, you're like, I just went from third to fourth and it's going faster. Like what the fuck was that about? Or the the 765 yeah. LT, which blew its yeah. tires off at 100 miles an hour, which was really, really sketchy. Uh -huh. um, I just had to go in the Elva. The, which is a, a, a Senna without a windshield, <laughs> and, right. you know, and uh, they, they're now built just selling Can-Am cars. And I yeah. thought my face was going to just come off um, <laughs> while yeah. driving it. Yeah, because I've driven like, you know, those open cars like an Atom, but I bet the Elva is a whole other experience. 800 horsepower. <laughs> it's it's 2,500 2, pounds dry, so probably 2,650 oh. wet. And 800 horsepower with no fucking windshield. With no windshield. Holy crap. <laughs> or roof that or windows at wild. all. Yeah. I, th I thought my face wild. was going to melt off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's It was crazy. Crazy, 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 crazy. Uh, wow. Story coming out for uh, for Road and Track. Yo, but um, tell me all about your Defender, because I think I might buy a shorty wheelbase for the wife, maybe. Okay. Well, you know, every single two-door SUV that has ever been made has failed. So just keep that in mind. <laughs> <laughs> including the Jeep Wrangler, which is failing as a two-door. Well, but um, failing, I mean, in, like, sales, that doesn't necessarily mean, like, the, it, they won't get around to releasing it, and I won't be able to buy one. Hey, yeah, I know, but I think that that two-door is going to be short-lived. But keep in mind, I possess my dream car here, which is a two-door yeah. SUV, my little yeah. uh, convertible G-Wagon. Um, I, this this little guy, my, look at this, this yes. very beautiful... Very oh. stupid and yet very awesome. Do you think that's the ugliest car? No, the Defender. No, I didn't say is, ugly. I said stupid. 
I think it's ugly. Oh. <laughs> I think it's very ugly. <laughs> People tweet me. They're like, that car's so ugly. Ha ha ha. And I'm like, yeah. It yes. is. Yeah, you should see how um, fast ugly turns into money. Ha. <laughs> well, look nope. at the M Coupe, right? The Z3 M Coupes. Uh -huh. Everybody thought those were so stupid, and now they're selling their incredible money. Um, but the Defender, no, it's been great. Um, stunningly great, actually. I was surprised. So I've put almost 9,000 miles on mine already. Um, I drove it, yeah, I drove it from California to Nantucket and back. So it's really as you can fast. Drive, pretty much Why did you like yeah. bonsai yeah, well, that? You did it like two days <laughs> cross country. It's crazy. Because what, what am I going to do? Not? I mean, come on. What do you want me to do? <laughs> what do you want me to do? You want me to go slow through these places? No, it was reasonable. You know, I got some crap for that. But, you know, the speed limit in most of Texas where I was, West Texas to basically Dallas, is, a, is 80 miles an hour. So you can really move. <laughs> I'm not fucking judging your pace. I don't <laughs> care how fast. It, but, like it, it, but you drove at the speed that people drive when they don't stop to sleep. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> It's not like you. Well, it's not like I'm accusing you of cannonballing. You just well, like you drove at an uncomfortable people. pace that involves like not getting enough sleep. Really, I, we did go. I mean, I didn't want to stop. The truth is, I did the trip because I didn't want to fly, because of, and so I'm able to. <laughs> this is crazy, but I, I when I on the way back, I gave my ferry ticket to the guy getting on the ferry on Nantucket, and I did not encounter another individual except for my wife who came with me until I got home. Because I just did not want to deal with any people. So I stayed at self-check and Airbnbs. I didn't go into bathrooms or rest stops. I didn't do any of that stuff. Holy I just shit. Wow, your, yeah. lev your level of comfort is uh, low. That's low, huh? I'm going to go from, I'm going to go to an island on the far side of the country without interacting with another human. It's kind of impressive, right. actually. I mean, it's, 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 well, it's really well, commitment. We, we, we had friends that met us there, and we all quarantined before and on. But anyway, the car was great, and, and it did really well. And, it's a lot of driving. Um, it's a ton. It's a ton of driving. But, you know, I like a good road trip to break in a new car. I don't know about that good of a road trip. It was very long. Um, but it, it was great. I heard it quite a bit, both here and then there. It's not technical off-roading there, but through crazy mud and on a lot of sand, including some really soft sand, which is a good test sometimes of, of you know, how capable a car's off four-wheel drive system is. And it did well. It did well at everything. It had one issue, the sunroof, um, it wouldn't open or close. And they fixed it. It was like a loose connect. The dealer fixed it in like an hour of labor. But other than that, it was it was perfect. That's and awesome. And we were thrilled with it. I would do the trip again. In fact, I might this summer. We had it, uh, you know, we had it for a week, and, and I did a lot of street. Our our press car looked basically just, just like yours that you bought. It looks like basically the same spec. And um, yeah. it was fucking incredible off-road. I have a trail up yeah. here that you should come do with me. It's super, super fun. You don't even have to get in your car. I'll just wave at you from outside your car window. From I would my... love off-roading. Let's do it. It's, I have a trail that I take every SUV on. I only take production SUVs up it, not by policy. That's just what I've got. And every production SUV I've ever taken up there has made it. Um, and the Defender went up it faster and easier than any SUV I've ever taken up this trail. It was amazing. I, I've been shocked by how good it is off-road. But, you know, yeah. I still am getting the complaints. It's full Defender people. Oh, it's a piece of crap. Oh, it's like the new Discovery. And I'm like, what do you mean? I, like, this is more capable than my old one. It's got more ground clearance. It's got better departure and breakover angles. It has an enormous amount of tech that makes it so easy to off-road. I have two lockers on mine because I got the rear locker as an option as well. And it's just unbelievably capable off-road, like insanely, insanely so. And people are like, well, they, it's a Discovery. They didn't bring back the Defender. And I'm like, I love my Defender, but it's a piece of crap. Like you don't want to, they, they can't sell that anymore. You know, those no, days are No, they can't. And even the, you know, there's these companies that are trying to, to, to do these pro touring, you know, defenders. And yeah. some are doing better jobs than others. Uh, I've driven two different ones, and not to single anyone out, but the fact is neither of the, of those, of the companies really managed to totally on shitbox the defender and the ne <laughs> neither one uh would fit uh people that had left arms uh yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. they're terrible yeah they're ergonomically terrible yeah and now they're doug in his boy-like chest is really meant for <laughs> <a> defender <laughs> <laughs> those viewers who send me email um yeah it's it's that's the thing about it. And, and you know what's funny because people see them on the road and then and, and the yellow one people come up to me all the time. Especially when I'm on the inside, they come up and say, "I really want one of these," 
And then, but the truth is they're in a Range Rover right now. And what they want is they want their Range Rover's driving experience in a Defender. And that will never happen. No yeah. matter how much money you throw at an old Defender, it is still at its core, an yeah. old Defender It is a disaster. And you have to be an enthusiast to be willing to put up with that stuff. My, I, Matt, I got mine back from the shop two weeks ago, three weeks ago, I'm driving it home and the check engine light comes on, I swear to God. And I'm like, you know what? I'm not even gonna bother. I will take it back when it's time for the next oil change. It's not even worth it. That is the level of crap you have to be willing to put up with. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's it's a classic car. Like, okay, I get it. Right. Classic SUVs, fine. And there's pe- I you know, I, I understand there's people that are like, really committed to getting up some super hard hill in a three-speed fucking CJ with ARBs and shit. Like, I get that. But, like, just to me, and I say this a lot, like, to me, off-roading is just about getting to the beautiful parts of the world that roads don't get you to, you know? Uh, right. that, and, and, and to that end, the Defender is much more Range Rover than old-school Defender. The new one, the new one. Much more Range Rover than right. old-school Defender. And you can literally go doot doot and then just point it up a hill and smash the throttle and you're just golden it's just yep. easy it's just good yep. it's fucking great totally. it's so nice I and when are, are, I do you it. think uh do you think shelves and dashboards are going to come back because that's my other favorite part of the defender the dashboard I shelf i love the dashboard shelf it is so amazingly nice i the have best. this giant water bottle and it doesn't fit in any cup holder in the world <laughs> so i just throw it in the shelf now if we get in an accident it's going to hit the passenger in the face and kill them but that's not my biggest concern i need to put it on my <laughs> oh my god what was i driving the other day oh the 992 porsche which is just a fucking amazing automobile no matter how you option it out right but it's got yeah. the new cup holder i loved the old pop yeah, out of same. the dash cup holders loved them same. The We're fucking the only best. Ones, though. Everyone else hated, hated them, them except us. Yeah. The new one, you know where it is? You've driven a 992, right? You know where yeah, the new one like is? Yeah, it's like right in the middle. Right? In the middle, in the armrest, right? Mm-hmm. But it doesn't hold a Yeti. Because, right. like, the regular size Yeti. And it, I tried to put a Yeti in the other day, and I, and then I put the car in D, and it moved forward like a foot, and the thing like ejected, like an F fourteen, like ejected my Yeti <laughs> onto the interior, onto me, onto Zach, uh, and the interior of the nine nine two Turbo, which was white. <laughs> oh. It was a white, white, white car, white leather, oh. red and white dash. It was a strawberry shortcake. <laughs> Wow! Hysterical. What a build! Fast car they built like that. Yeah, it was amazing. It was so weird. How bizarre! What was? What the hell is going on there? Watch Some this crazy Hines. Watch. Check out my color collection. <laughs> they, were, they were always pretty restrained when I was working there. But damn, that's this crazy. is a uh, the the. The Porsche Cars North America press cars, they get some pretty fun specs. They go with the bright colors. They usually get the good performance options. And every once in a while, they'll throw in something with, like, no options at all. Like, I drove a $199,000 Turbo S once that had manual seats. And, like, that was – and and just nothing. It was a base, base Turbo S. It was amazing. And then – here, Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. No, go ahead. Go ahead. But the the Germans sometimes this is a, this was a German spec car that was shipped over for like a first drive, and the yeah. ger- you sort of just take whatever shows up. There's less. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. And Where a lot it? of it is also seems to be based on suppliers and what you know what what is available for the early ones, the early cars especially. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> when when I was working there, I was the one who was responsible for putting physically putting in the press car. The press department would spec the car. And they would bring the order to me, and I would order the car. And I remember, I'll never forget, the Cayman R, when it first came out, the guy had listed me all of the options written out, and then he had written all the option codes. And he didn't know the code at the time for air conditioning, so he had left that code off. And so I just went through each code, code type, and 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 then I ordered the cars, and then they showed up, and I had (laughs) left off the code. So we ordered like one hundred twenty thousand dollars Cayman R's. They were full spec cars, but they didn't have air conditioning. <laughs> All, the whole press fleet, and yeah. and then so that was bad enough because we got crap for that in the magazines. Like I can't believe Porsche would make this car. It's so ridiculous. <laughs> and then we had to put those cars down and selling. <laughs> 
I don't even know what happened. I think we sent them all to like Seattle and Portland and just hope to God that someone there. <laughs> I drove two Cayman GT4s in the same day a couple of years ago, a street car and a uh, club sport, the race car. They were both owned by yeah. that dude, CJ Wilson. And yeah, the yeah. street car had AC delete and the race car had dual zone <laughs> climate control. <laughs> You know what's hilarious? The uh, the Elva, the Elva has uh, had full AC. No way! You're which kidding? Was, That's yeah, insane. I once drove a four hundred and eighty thousand uh, dollar six seven five LT that had no AC to save weight, and here's this Elva. It's a Can Am car with no fucking windshield. No AC is right there. Really that is insane. Is the control the same? Is it like that screen and a little picture of the guy with the yeah. helmet on? Yeah. They, I mean, they moved it. It's it's instead of um instead of being down in the middle, they kind of moved all the screen and the controls kind of up a little closer to the to the steering wheel. But um, it's, but like yeah, it's see basically the same. One yeah. of those clip on fans on someone's visor, and you're yeah. like, what are you even doing? <laughs> Well, and what we see all the time in Venice, because everyone's fucking living in their vans, is people jury rigging up like home window AC units, and they'll just yeah. you know sawzall a panel in the just van a generator. and run that shit on a generator. Yeah, that shit is fucking. I mean, it works. Yeah. MacGyver the fuck. You don't want to drive with it. <laughs> um, speaking of interesting controls, yeah. I'm going to present you two with something that someone in the chat mentioned. Zach has found uh, something. Tesla is showing off their new interior for the Tesla Model S and X. I'm sorry. Is, is that a Cessna tiller? What the fuck oh, is I that? Oh, I forgot. This is great. Zach, thank you for bringing this up because I love when Matt <laughs> talks about Tesla because Matt gets so incensed that it's just fun to be a part of <laughs> just, please, tell, tell us your thoughts and then move on to Elon Musk, please. I, will, I would love to hear. Listen, all you need to know about steering wheels that don't make a complete circumference. All I needed to learn about that, I learned from trying to parallel park the Batmobile. I did a television show with Adam Carolla called The Car Show in 1990s. I said 2011. It was not good. But I drove the Batmobile, the George Barris one, and I had to fucking yeah. parallel park it. And when, you, when, you're, when you're looking over your back shoulder and you go to grab the wheel and the wheel isn't there. Terrifying. <laughs> it's it's the worst. Piece. And anyone who ever tries to build or install a wheel that doesn't go all the goddamn way around will learn the very hard way it what makes happens no sense. when you try to do basic car things. How many U-turns did we do today where we had to use all of the steering a wheels? A million. You know? Wheels are circles. This is a good it system. Is it is a thing. There's a, they now have a gauge cluster there, which was everybody's big complaint about Model 3 that – there yeah. was no gauge cluster right in front of the steering wheel, and you had to look over. Remember at the top left of that screen to get like yeah. your, your miles per hour yeah, and stuff. It that. looks like they, they bowed to that criticism. They they admit that they were wrong. And so they saw the Mach E, and they were like, "Oh shit!" I right, because that Mach E did it right. Yeah, I, did you like Mach E? I enjoyed. Yeah, it. Yeah, I loved it. I loved it. I mean, they for a, for a new vehicle, they did. Oh, you had nine oh three. Yeah, somebody tweeted that they were the plates were identical. Or oh, so, okay. Or we both white fed, you know. It was uh, yeah. it was such such a nice car. I mean, for net forty eight thousand five hundred dollars, it was like, oh my god, this is like a crazy amount of car. Yes, I I really liked it. Um, and I hate to say this because people will just be upset because people are already about this, but I think it drove kind of like a Mustang. To be totally honest, like really? I was able. <laughs> They, I did it, you know, I went to, they had some launch for it and, and there was a race, there was an autocross type situation and I got the tail out on every lap on several turns. It was pretty easy to do and it was fast and I don't know, the center of gravity is really low. I feel like it drives like a pretty good car. I mean, it's a crossover, yeah, it but does. as crossovers go, it's fast and it's fun and it's sharp. Like I really liked it. I think I actually think to say that it drives like a Mustang is a slight disservice to the car, um, because I think it drives in a lot of ways better than most Mustangs. I mean, Shelby's excluded, but I think the the basic body control of the Mach E yeah. is better than than most Mustangs. Yeah, um, better balance, better center of gravity, better like it hides flickability. Its more. It hides its weight yeah, better than Mustang does. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I'm super. Yeah stoked for the GT. I'm like, oh shit, P PS4S's and mag ride like plus 200 horsepower, like yes please, let's go. Oh, 
it's one of the cars I'm most excited about 21 for sure. That'll be really cool. Yeah, and actually, and and even uh, Hannah was into it. I was like, oh, you're about this. Oh, maybe we can, uh, maybe I can sneak the really fast one by you. And <laughs> um, but did you, but did you use your phone as a key? That is not a good system. I do not recommend. Yeah, they gave us uh, like phones that they had pre-programmed, and yeah, I mean, I don't know. There's pros and cons to it. They told me that they feel that their customers will never use a key again. Well, that was a, let's tell you why they will. I, I, yeah, I mean, <laughs> there's some issues with it. There's some issues with it. I mean, your phone could die, but you have the little N pad. Oh, um, well, let's uh, let's go into this. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> we talked about this on the last show, sure. but we Zach and I basically got stranded for like 20 minutes because the phone as a key feature did not work properly, and the car wouldn't yeah. wouldn't recognize a phone. And uh, the code thing didn't work either. It was we had to get some people oh, on the well, phone. It was a little frustrating, but so I would just say cool. for at least the time being, if you get a Mach E, carry the fob. Just, just trust well, me. In on an this ideal one. world, in an ideal world, it would work. Yes. You know, that's the, well, that's the problem. That's the is reality. always it's like the same reason I'm trying not to go too much. Is your is your uh, relatively new home, Doug, a smart home? No, my home is, is, is a historic home, and so even though it is new to me, it is very, very old. Yeah, okay, cool. So you haven't, so I, I'm, I'm not trying to get my home too smart. I don't want my house right. to know too much about me, honestly. <laughs> you know what? That is, that, it's so interesting that you say this. This has been a big topic of mine. We had a power outage the other day. You know what happens when you have a power outage and then you have to recover from that? You got to do so much stuff. The gate lights, you know, outside are now the timer's off. So you got to go downstairs oh and do that. You got to reset every clock. You got to go around and reprogram all the stuff. The internet goes down and then you got to figure that out. And I got the whole Wi Fi extender shit that I got to go around and reset, et cetera, et cetera. The garage door no longer is working. <laughs> you got to reprogram all this stuff. Yeah. It's so funny because you think that like you're, I don't think that I'm off the grid by, by any means, but you think that you're kind of an island. Like you can just live. It's fine. Yeah. No, you can't. You need <laughs> no, you're fucked. Oh, oh my God. You should have seen what happened to me though. You should have seen what happened to me the other day when the, the doorbell, dude, I had to like my, my, the, my power went out and, and my fucking like the, the, the cams all go down, the Wi-Fi all goes down. Right. So the, you know, the garage door opener doesn't work, but I had left, yep. I had left, uh, you know, I'd left my house. I have an app on my phone that opens my garage door too. So I had left and I didn't have my key. I came home. I didn't know the power was out. So the app is, it's, you know, and right. I'm like screaming at shit. It's just. And it's funny that you said resetting all the light timers. As you said it, you might have seen my eyes kind of go up and to the right. That was me going, oh, that's how my outdoor lights got fucked up two weeks ago. <laughs> that, was me. that was me literally going, I was wondering why they were four hours off. And that's Wait, exactly I had to why. Up. I must have been two weeks trying to figure this out. And then I was like, oh, you got power at it. But yeah, the cameras all go down, and I got two different types of cameras inside and outside, so that's all a problem. And yeah, the garage door, it's a nightmare. Yeah. We are so beholden to the world, the, all the stuff that we need. It's crazy to me, and I don't really think about that until I need it. Yeah, well, that's that's the the concern with uh, the the autonomous vehicle research industry as well, isn't it? It's like, you know, you... Your phone knows everything about you, but but in theory, you could leave your phone at home and leave, you know get go out and you could get in your un, your unconnected four GT or your your Land Rover right. and go anywhere, anytime, and be and be pretty much you know off the grid. But if uh, if every vehicle and whether that's a Polestar One or a Tesla Three or a Ford Mach E or whatever, if it's your you know your connected vehicle. You know, the, all of a sudden, everyone knows everything about you at all times, right. and and it's it becomes very easy to sell you things without without your knowledge. Yeah. You know, they I've you yeah. know I've, to to change your they only need to change your behavior like one percent, one and a half percent, and that's like could be trillions of dollars. You know, it's right. crazy. It's right. fucking crazy, man. What else have you driven recently that really stuck out to you as being uh, very special that most the mass audience wouldn't appreciate, but a nerd like me really would? You know what I drove the other day that you would appreciate? I drove a 1993 blue Geo Metro convertible. Do you remember yeah. that? Car? Oh, yeah. Hell yeah. And it was probably the nicest one I've seen in a really, really long time. There's a super shit pile yeah. one on my block that's someone's daily driver. It's ragged as fuck. You could hear oh. it from like three blocks away. Still going, though. I 
you know, this is a three cylinder and it's got like 50 horsepower. Do you remember back then cars would like, there was a base model with like 46 horsepower. And then there was the nice one with like 51. (laughs) (laughs) Was this originally a Korean car? Were Geo's Korean cars that were badged in America? It it depended on the car, exactly what the rebadge was. They were all foreign market rebadges. The Metro was a Suzuki Swift, so it was Japanese. Right, right, right. But, yeah. the, but the Geo Prism was a Toyota Corolla, and then the, the Geo Storm was an Isuzu Impulse. So they really had, like, any Japanese car they could come up with. <laughs> they were they were like... Badge it up! <laughs> yeah, so, so that right there, the white one is the... Uh, right, the, the red one. That was, yeah, that the, was impulse, the Storm. Yeah. The Storm had a different front end, and, and the Impulses had four-wheel drive, which the Storm never did. But... They were the same, you know, yeah, that was yeah, how they yeah. did it. VM was like, well, we could just do this. And then these automakers were like, wait a second, we can do this ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> Toyota doesn't need GM's help like Corolla anymore. <laughs> You know, back in the day when they launched Daewoo in, in the States, uh, my wife was in college and she was a Daewoo salesperson. They, they no gave, way, she was one of the Daewoo she, people? She was a Daewoo person. They gave you a Daewoo. And right. it was like a pyramid scheme, basically. You would what? get, and she got like eight or ten of her friends to buy Daewoo's. They a hundred percent of the cars were shit boxes, and all of the friends continue to give her crap <laughs> to this day. About remember when you made me buy that fucking hunk of shit in college? <laughs> this is actually unbelievable to me because almost no one is aware of this, but that was Daewoo's plan to break into the U.S. market. They approached yeah. college students and they said. Here, you know, you do this and sell it to your friends. Matt, how did they, I've always wondered this. How did they find her? What was the, like, did, you know, like it wasn't social media. How did they decide this is the girl we want selling our day? <laughs> you know, I else. don't know, but my, but my wife manages to find the most interesting shit and interesting shit manages to find her. I'll ask later and I'll get you an exact <laughs> answer, but you know, I like, I mean, she, you know, she moved to LA by herself and literally like found a softball team on Craigslist and like met like some 80 year old dude to play chess with, you know, on the internet somehow. And like, uh, you know, and like just finds weird and you know, she does research. So she's kind of finds weird stuff. Um, so I'll ask her, I don't know. So she- <laughs> She is the type that would have found the Daewoo uh, salesperson. That that makes the most sense that it was her. That's so funny. I've always wanted to know from people, you know, the problem ended up being that none of these kids had any credit. And so they really (laughs) ran into a lot of of problems with repos and stuff because they were selling to 19 year old kids who just had no idea. You know? Yeah. My brother-in-law just bought a vehicle from uh, Auto Nation, I believe, yeah. and sent me a fucking photo from under the dash like, yo, what the fuck is this? And there's a fucking tracker on his shit. <laughs> it's like a fucking, a G, you know, for uh, a remote yeah. shutdown. Like, like he's I'll like, this is bullshit. Oh, I paid in cash. What the fuck? I don't have, I'm not even, <laughs> I bought the car. I'm just like, dude, don't even worry about it. They put that shit on every single car they sell. It's whatever. But yeah. Uh, no, you nailed it, Doug. This New York Times article says, they, yeah. they, they asked an analyst and they're like uh, it's really hard to sell the college students because they don't have any money they don't have yeah. any credit so you really have to just yeah. pitch the parents on it and then you have to pitch them on this yeah. hunk of shit yeah came with three cars they left with three cars that was was it three model years I think they went and that was oh, all they could no. manage I don't know, but I what was it? Uh, was it what fucking movie was it? Pineapple Express or something? Where Danny McBride runs someone over and he's like, "You just got run over in Daewoo Lanos." <laughs> <laughs> I think it was Pineapple Express, maybe. <laughs> it was bad. Uh, but how did you? How was the Metro to drive? Horrible or kind you of? You know, okay? Matt, <laughs> I was thinking because it was like the nice. This man was this, you know, and it's a convertible, and I'm like, you know, this is going to be pretty cool. And it wasn't. I mean, it was a disastrous, a terrible car. It, it drove badly. Uh, it, the, the amount of chassis flex in that car is indescribable. Oh, um, man, you should like see cellophane. how much the windshield. It would to- yeah, I mean, it was an absolute disaster. There's also no – one of the issues that I discovered is there's no um, – there's nothing between the passenger compartment and the trunk. Wait, what? So there's no – rigidity in this car at all like there's no bar there like you wait can so just like if you back. open you know the trunk have, like, and fold down seats this <laughs> yeah. car just had a <laughs> it just had what no, no there's a curtain there is <laughs> no there's a curtain, an actual <laughs> like, <it's... laughs> 
there's one uh, there's a curtain in the trunk and then there's a curtain in the passenger compartment but that's all there is there's oh no God. like structural piece there i'll show my the video is not going to go up for a little while but what it does you'll see you just pull it up and there you're in the trunk you know because it was, was based on a hatchback so like, all that stuff was open they just left it was the owner of the vehicle like really <laughs> really proud of their metro like really proud of it you know He's going to sell it on the site. And so he had just bought it. And I think he had bought it. It was like like one owner for a year. It wasn't a one owner car, but like it was the same owner for the last 20 years. Or yeah, something. Yeah. He had just bought it just to, to, you know, sell. And he was local. And I was like, yeah, I'm, I'm ready to. Does someone, um, you know, because obviously the submissions for the site are a fucking gold mine of shit for you to make videos about. But do folks like, do they pay extra for you to make that video? Or you just randomly pick out shit that you like from the submissions? You know, we thought about we thought about all pay extra service, but what we figured was a I don't want to shoot. Sometimes if someone is to pay for it, I've already shot that car, or they yeah. live in Texas. You know, I don't want to go there. And so what it ends what it has ended up being is I've just kind of picked cars like oh this one I would do, and mostly it's local stuff with COVID. But um, but the result of that is whenever I do one, I mean you can imagine what happens. It, it's it's a it's a classified car ad, but it gets a million views in a week, and so well, yeah, all the cars have sold. Yeah, I understand yeah. why why that model would work. Yeah, yeah I just didn't know right. if there was a little fucking payola involved with that shit. No, <laughs> that shit. we never were able to figure out a way to make that work where not only could they pay, but also I could somehow choose the cars I wanted. And we ultimately just decided like it would be easier and better for everybody if I just picked a car and then I get the you know the views on my channel and the site gets the benefit because yeah. the car sells you know, every time, obviously. I mean, that's probably that. the right decision. Plus, if someone pays you and you point out a quirk that they don't want to point it out, or if you, you, right. you know, you're kind of like, it's awkward if they want you to be super positive all the time. Right, right. And I yeah. mean, you know, with a geometric convertible, the owner was very aware of the situation with this geometric convertible. But yeah, I mean, you don't, I don't want to get in that situation. And, and, you know, the channel is still like the sacred thing for me. I, I can't start being, saying stuff that I shouldn't be saying. And so that was the right call. Probably, yeah. yeah. Last time uh, in June, you talked about how uh, you were shocked that, like, people were super into, like, the fucking Hyundai Palisade or something, and no one gave a shit about the hypercars relatively. Is that uh, still the case, or has it shifted back more to a little more entertainment and a little less what's up with the quirks and features of this seven row or seven seater uh you know fairly average suv well i mean the suv content like family cars in market cars that stuff all still does really well which has been a big thing you know i've been trying to convince these automakers for a long time like hey you got to be paying attention to youtube because there's actually people buying and it's cars like that palisade that i'm able to do that but like i got i did the toyota mirai a couple days ago which i thought would tank as a video i put it up in january which has the worst ad revenue i was like just, you know, get rid of that. And it blew up. It, it did some insane traffic. It's like 1.3 million views after a week. What? And I'm Why? like, that car stinks. Who gives not a shit about it? it? Well, I'm not going to say it stinks, but it, it's only <laughs> sold in California. How are all these people so interested in this thing? You can't even buy it in most of America, let alone the rest of the English speaking world. It's not even available. I don't get it. But people watched it. It's, That's it's weird. Hard. Cars, regular that car cars, does suck. Really well. That is an ugly it, car. It's a really no, no. Ugly the car. new one is not so ugly. Have you seen the new one? No. Is there a new? Is there Zach? Can you find me a twenty twenty one? It's a twenty one. I imagine is the new one, 21. right? Yeah, and it. Looks I mean, the last now. one is one of is one of the ugliest cars that money could buy. Wait, at any price. Palisade the new, no, no, the no. Uh, the new Toyota Mirai. Yeah. No, the last one is. Heinous. Yeah, I mean, unforgivably bad. Oh yeah, no, the new oh, yeah, yeah, though the new one looks like uh, like it could be the Avalon or something. Is that really yeah. what it looks like in person? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it looks like a Lexus uh, GSS. Oh, okay, part, all know. right. Well, that I so I understand because it looks good. That's why. Now it doesn't it doesn't drive any better than it did before. But we'll move on from that. The, oh the, really? The is, is it? It's it's Toyota's uh, Passat CC. You know what's funny, Matt? Except that it costs sixty five grand. You know Get what's the funny? fuck out of here! That's sixty five grand. <laughs> well, wait. Before, before is, is CarPlay that... forty two hundred? <laughs> no, now wait a minute. Before you think it's that bad of a value, I should mention it does have all of one hundred and seventy horsepower. So you know there is a really. Oh. <laughs> it might actually be more like two hundred. I don't remember the actual. Uh, it's it's not a lot. In fact, I oh, it's one eighty. That's what it is. One hundred eighty horsepower. So it's, well, it looks it's really a strong nice. value proposition. In, it photographs well, at least. It, Does it look good in person? It finally looks. 
Yeah, it finally looks really good. And they've switched it to rear-wheel drive. And so they were pitching it as this, like, sporty hydrogen car. But, I mean, it's got 180 horsepower. It doesn't, it's a joke. It's, it's not a fast. It's a 0 to 60 at 9 point something. Ooh, I don't wow, know why they were slow. thinking oh, that would boy. be something. That's like, I was going to say, yeah. is it can it just be pitched as a luxury sedan, like a big, large luxury sedan? But if it's that right. slow... I mean, I like it as a design language for sure, but 180 horsepower, fucking give me a break. Call it a slow seven series that will work. (laughs) Yeah. Maybe they'll have it. Are there just regular press cars of this? Can this be booked as a press car? Or did you go to some special thing to fuck with this? They had a they had a thing in Newport Beach, and I went up there just for the day and did it and came back down. But I don't know what the the interior looks like. They had it. yeah, yeah, no, it, it's a nice car. It's just a, it's a tough value proposition when Model Three exists. I can go to the dealer, and I know you hate Tesla, but I can go to the, the Tesla, you know, pick up a Model Three for twenty grand less, fifteen I grand less. I don't. And by the way, I don't power. hate individual Model Threes. <laughs> yeah. I have no, I have no beef with the Tesla Model Three as a car. None, right. none. Right, as right, a matter right. of fact, in all likelihood, I will be in the next week or two assuming Alex Roy's lease. On his Model Three, he has—he's the kind of person who would have an extra Model Three. <laughs> right. And I am Why waiting. What? Why are you taking it? Um, because of the vehicles that I would consider, we need a normal car in my household. Someone hit me, my wife's Delica, which is the best. The the Delica is the best van in the world, and someone hit my wife's car, and it's going to be in the shop getting fixed, and. And uh, and we just need a fucking normal shit kick around car. And I actually was considering Mach E or this short short wheelbase Defender. And um, and Alex asked if I it, I was talking about swap lease with Alex. He was like, oh, I was gonna throw my Model Three up on swap lease. And I was like, oh, you know, how many miles and how many whatever, blah 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 blah. Turns out I could just take and not deal with the fees and bullshit if I just assume his lease for fourteen months, long range Model Three, and then. Do you not? Do you not possess any normal car? No. <laughs> he does not. I can confirm work? this. <laughs> Countach, Ferrari you have? You have, 328, yeah. Safari yeah. 911, 1991 Mitsubishi yeah. Delica. That's it. That's it? What? You, you got rid of your SL. I sold the SL, yes. And you had... I had my mom's F-Type for like a year. My mom, my mom okay. sent her F-Type out here to me for like a year while they were renovating their house and they just needed it gone. And so I had, we had that to kick around in when we needed it, but it's, that's gone now too. So no, the, I don't have a vehicle that is both an automatic transmission, which my wife prefers, and that will also do over 70 miles an hour. <laughs> may, I a, may I make a suggestion for you? Yeah, in, sure. in the vein of taking cars from your parents, why not take your mom's old Lexus RX? That seems like it would be right up your alley. <laughs> you know why? Two reasons. One, the last RX, the last Farrah family RX has just been moved from its semi-retirement in uh, South Carolina. They, they actually gave it to my sister. Uh, so my, my little sister so is now driving the last this RX. This actually already happened. This is the, the this already RX happened, already... but to a different sibling. <laughs> Right, okay. <laughs> um, and also, the <laughs> that's it. That's the, the RX only may reason. retire on the West Coast where this, the, the weather's nicer, but for now it's yeah. going to be working in New York. Yeah, no, the RX is, is putting in putting in work. It's going back to daily to daily duty. No, I, I just, I, I don't know. I also would me? like to experience Tesla ownership yeah. for a period of time in not a prepared press car. You know what I mean? Right. Like, I want to have totally. that experience for a little while it's not long term it's not huge commitment it's not a ton of money out of my pocket and where at the end of it i go here you go goodbye and then i i buy the car that we want to buy you know whatever it's all good right yeah no that makes sense sorry well yeah but anyway you yes compared to this toyota mirai for 65k you could get a model 3 yeah i hard to believe most people won't except for people who are really like into hydrogen as next you know there are people who like are as into you know certain alternative fuels as we are into like manual transmission to the Yeah, whatever. the bio it's the it's just another biodiesel hippie right. <laughs> angle. The, do you know biodiesel hippies? They're really fun. Bro, I make I my, make my own veggie anything. oil, bro, 240D for life. <laughs> Can I tell you something about veggie when I owned a Hummer. Do you remember this? I had a yellow yeah. awful Yeah, though you had the was, worst spec Hummer ever. 
the worst spec, except that it was a wagon. And I, I if it was a pickup truck, it would have been worse. So that car I owned when I lived in Philly, and you remember Philly. I <laughs> land of hopes and dreams. Uh, <laughs> people were so angry with me when I would park it on the street because it was such a ridiculous giant behemoth of a vehicle. I mean, we would drive it by pen, and we would people would scream. This happened multiple times. People would scream like, "Get out of here with that!" or whatever. People thought it was so bad. So I started putting when I work at college I would liberals. Fucking liberals. <laughs> I put a sticker. I started putting stickers in it that said powered by veggie oil, even though it was really a gas engine. Uh, <laughs> Did that work? No one with it after that. <clears throat> yeah, no one, no one went out of the park. No one messed with it after that. No one, no one did anything. Well, when I had my H1 and I was living in Manhattan, which is an equally stupid place to have an H1 to Incredibly. Philadelphia, maybe even stupider, um, uh, people, someone left a bag of dog shit uh, on the hood oh. once. I f definitely found a spit on it on several different occasions. Yeah, people were not not happy to see me or you driving Hummers in urban environments. <laughs> yeah, no, that was not. No, if you watch the, the value is, of Hummers, though, I mean, oh, not shocking, I, but I can't believe it. It's the worst piece of crap car in the history of the world. It's terrible. What's it's really shocking is the value of H twos, and H two is like sixty thousand dollars. Like what? That the is fuck? We hit, we took an H2 on cars and bids. I think someone was willing to do it no reserve, so we decided to give it a go because why not? And it sold for like forty six, and we were like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and then, of course, that opens up the floodgates, and like ten more people submit H2s to us. Well, guess what? They all also sold. For like Come on. So I think we've sold. I think we've sold four H2s. We've had four on the site or something, and we've sold them all. It's hilarious. And yeah, there has become this like huge market for H2. <laughs> Why? Why do you think the that? Three like... I don't know. What do you tell me? What is the possible explanation for this? They they look they're bi they're big enough like H1s, but don't drive quite as horribly. <laughs> I don't. I mean, I'm, I'm I'm throwing darts at the wind here. I don't fucking know. I've been in them. They're terrible. I don't like. <laughs> Then we knew they were terrible, and yet, and now they're 15 years old and terrible. So how do you explain this? I don't understand it, but they've been selling. 2007 yeah, victory. Well, that's got low miles. 20,000 miles is pretty low. That's pretty low, yeah. even for a Hummer. Yeah, it's an H. I mean, I agree. I, <laughs> I know. I know. I know. What about what's the what's the oh 25k for 90,000 miles? Get the fuck out of here, dude. That shit's crazy. <laughs> Well, yeah. the, the 09 yeah. H3T yeah, Alpha, the H3T Alpha selling yeah. for over $5 is, you ever drive one of them? They are the worst. The oh, H3 was so cool embarrassing. Ugh. Ugh. No, 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 terrible. This, is, this, is, this is the coolest one. This is the Alpha had the V8. It was the only I don't one you could care. get the V8. And this is the pickup. Okay. No, I don't these care. are cool. These are Tainous. cool. No, no. <laughs> I love those. They even offered it with a stick. Those are the coolest cars. I was so happy when that guy submitted it. I would have taken that at any reserve. I was like, yes, The proportions please. on it are so Ugh. weird. It's an it's an uglier yeah. gladiator. Yeah. Right, but now Jeep, Jeep Tron is now in selling the car with those exact same ugly proportions. Hummer no. did it first the, and cooler. The Jeep the Jeep is better looking. Like the, the windows are too small here. I don't know. Like they I think up the, the bed is thirds. probably bed six is inches too high. Yes, the bed's too like too the... tall. <laughs> weirdly too high. But yeah. I think the problem they were running into is they had to make it match up with the window line, which was narrow. Yeah. And right. so the bed had to be tall. Very but true. I love those H three Ts. I think they were cool as hell. That the was one, one on your site ones. with the camper on it was hilarious. That thing oh, was yeah. CG actually. Yeah. See that one yeah. kind of makes sense because a Hummer off road, you know, as an overlanding vehicle. That's yeah. kind of cool. Yeah. yeah, totally. So that car was roll, and then they did this, which is interesting. And so it had a salvage title. But like the only way it ever would have gotten built was, you know, no one was ever going to hack up a Hummer to make this. But then now that it's built, it's like, holy crap, this thing is awesome. It's, it's pretty is, is the license plate off grid? It has to be. You have to you have to have a very yeah. long beard to buy this. I think. <laughs> yeah, right. And it did end up going to Seattle, which is where it belongs. Of I mean, the Pacific, Northwest, <laughs> the Pacific Northwest is like the dream place for that vehicle. But like that is such a cool build, and those, yeah. those are the kind of cars I'm obsessed with. We, we get on the site like weird, special, unusual. You know, when that came in, it was like we gotta take this. You know, this is so cool. Yeah, for the promotional I, value at the very least. For sure. 
It looks like it's had a, a couple lives. <laughs> we're we're going through pictures All right, right now. When you start looking, at it the looks like inside. it's had a couple of lives and maybe a couple uh, fucking. Mur- a hitchhiker a, was murdered bent over that. Right it is there. a very simple camper inside. <laughs> I mean, it has a stove and a sink. But... <laughs> There you go. Yeah, no, it's very. I think it's the, very the owner had it for like twenty five years or something. I call this he my rest in box. Himself, and then I, uh... I think I'm having a go. Have you seen? <laughs> did you get cool the? Is this thing? It's it is cool. It is cool for sure. It's not an H two. It's better. <laughs> I think I'm having a yeah. go in that that's uh, that thing new thing. It. That's the Tacoma based one with the full carbon fiber camper on it. Have you seen that one? What? Where yeah. it like weighs nothing? I have. I can't wait. Yeah, it's insane. And it almost seems like it's like integrated or something. Like it's a really, really cool, like it's a well-designed thing. I know what you're talking about. Yeah, that's it. Zach's got it. The carbon monocoque Tacoma 4x4. Look at that. It's super well integrated. And the whole back is made of carbon. We're going to fuck with that. That looks cool as shit. That looks like so that cool. That's I know. Thing. And the cool thing is it's like a little vehicle. It, you know, the, the, the Tacoma is not massive. So you can really go places with it. That'd be so cool. Well, <laughs> in our in our Venice van living, uh, as we as we witness among us every day, we see a lot of those old school Toyota and Datsun yeah, cab over. Yeah, yeah the Dolphin. Yeah. yeah, the Dolphin. You know about the Dolphin. <laughs> <laughs> well, they're all over San Diego, too. I didn't know about that stuff until I moved here. But yeah, of course, I see them here, too. How was Nantucket in the winter? Was it awesome? Yeah, you know, we go every New Year's and it's the best because no one's there. But this time there were a few more people there. People from from the rest of the country. Are, Nantucket had its best ever real estate year this year. They sold more homes than ever before. Zillow is forecasting Nantucket real estate is going to go up 11% this year. People wow. are flocking to vacation homes because – you know, they're feeling this, like, I don't want to be at home anymore. I don't want to be in New York City or Boston yeah, yeah. anymore. And so it's been absolutely insane there. I've never seen anything like it. This summer was the, the busiest I've ever seen. But over the winter, it's always, like, super cool. No one's there. It's a neat, it's a neat experience. It seems fun in the snow. I've never I've never seen yeah, snow it, in Nantucket. That seems fun. It almost never snows because it's so close to the ocean. But it does. It is cool when it does. I've been there once when it was heavy snow, and it was really cool. Um, you have, uh, you've done well, my friend. Oh, I am proud of you. Well, Your successes are many. And you, do you remember, <laughs> you got finish those M&Ms. <laughs> do you remember, you probably don't, but do you remember the first time I was ever on your podcast? Maybe I've brought this up before. I mean, I was, I was on when I, I had come out for car week. I was driving my Cadillac station lane across the country Mm -hmm. and you had a jalopnik people like three or four guys from jalopnik came on and travis okolsky was there and a couple other guys and because i was was like house right this was like a long time ago right yeah that's exactly right yeah and because i was like you know in the region for car week i came to and i remember like you all knew each other and i was so um just so overwhelmed by that. like it was like these guys I'm like how these guys are all like and then I don't I'm just a joke and I remember at point Neil like walked in the house announced and it was like what the hell is this and I'm like what is going on like Dan Neil is walking in here this guy won the Pulitzer for car commentary he's like every car reader's you know god and I'm like this is the just the most unbelievably scary thing I've ever done. And I was so nervous and I'm still nervous to this day when I go on this thing. Cause that's live. Hilarious. Scares the hell out of me. That's amazing. But, well, there was no one, when you watch, see Dan Neal come in the door and go, where's the green stuff, bud, give me the guitar <laughs> and the green stuff. <laughs> and and uh, yeah, there's no going back from that. I, it was just like, it was like, wow, this is, this is real stuff here. And I don't know what the hell I'm doing. I'm just a child. But I remember it's going back and thinking, like, I mean, yeah, it's great well, it fun. Turned work. Out to be. It turned yeah. out to be. But who, how the hell did I know? You know, I, I was well, terrified. When you figure out how to make, how you know, how to get beyond like just a scratching at this barely making a living, and you can actually, right. you actually have a system where you go, okay, I can wake up and do this thing that's pretty cool, and I'm not really like sweating like every day anymore about money. You're like, yeah, right. this is nice. It's good now. Right. 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 Yeah. Which, what is your, is in terms of your weekly schedule, are you 50 50 videos, uh, auctions or leaning more towards one or the other? The, the cars and bids has become like my real, my real thing. And I, I, 
Uh, I, the videos are still obviously still tremendously important. I think it's like, <laughs> I think it's like 60, 60. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. Every day is like out of control with how busy it is. And I don't think I really realized how much work the auction site would be. Um, we fortunately have some really good seven day a week who, business, right? Yeah, it really is. I mean, even though we're not running auction Saturday and Sunday or starting auction Saturday, they're still going, still getting doctors, you're still getting people, you're still getting emails, feedback, you know? And so, um, and, and you're still getting submissions and I still handle the submissions on the weekend, which is interesting. And, um, it's, I don't know, but I love it. It's great. It's so much fun. And I still love YouTube and I don't know. It's a, it's a cool, it's a cool gig to have both. That is good. I'm proud of you. I'm glad you figured it out and you will have, you will have an exit. Yeah. How is the car storage business going? Really good. We have less than 10 spaces remaining oh, in our main no room. Way. And we have th the two tandems and one VIP single remaining in our underground level. We are making money. Wow. It's all good. It's all good. It's good. It's above stop, board. You can stop doing all this. You don't have to talk to people like me anymore. <laughs> I don't want to stop. I don't want to stop. We hired Zach as a, now a full time employee of the You better not entire. stop, goddamn it! We bought we bought Zach's freedom. Uh, <laughs> no, Zach. Yeah, Zach's full time now, and and it and I just got I got to figure out, you know, the, the like you, you know, it's, it's sixty, like you said, sixty sixty. I just need to figure out where, uh, yeah. where at, at what point can I start to outsource myself in for the things that I don't physically have to be there for. So, you know, we'll get there, but, you know, cars come in, cars go out, some get washed, some get detailed, sometimes we ship them places. It's, you know, it's not, it, it, unlike building the building where I'd get a call once a week that's like, I'm sorry, how the fuck is that even possible? What are, what are we even, what, what, what? The governor said what? You know, rather than that, it's like, you know, oh, the the truck is a little late. You know, to do the thing. Oh, you know, we're it's it's a it's a it's a pretty straightforward uh, thing. Right. If you care about the cars and you care about making people happy and you ca care about not rushing around so you're breaking stuff, it's all gravy, bro. Right, I agree. Yeah. The outsourcing is a is a challenge, though. Isn't it? I finally hired a video editor. Um, he's great. It was the I was editing all my own videos until July. Until until July. <laughs> Oh my god! It's not like your shit Scorsese, bro. <laughs> it's not like it's not like only only I could handle this Herculean task. <laughs> no, you know, I wish you had told me that a year and a half ago. <laughs> You should have been like, I did this study on your podcast. And I'm like, I need to tell you something about mm -hmm. your vanity videos. I was, still editing, let me tell you something, I was still editing my own videos when that was happening. You should have told me that. Jesus. Oh, my God. We didn't know. We just yeah. assumed you had a, a team of 14-year-olds <laughs> editing on their phone while riding on a horse because that's probably what you could you could do both at the same time based on your... <laughs> I, look, I, I, the thing about any of us who are really, really owe everything to YouTube, and I think this is true of Hoobie, and I think this is true of all these guys, we're all terrified of making any change that would have any major effect on the channel right. and doing well. Because we all know that it's kind of a snowball, or at least this is how I think of it, and I think they think of it too. If you screw something up, and the next week you screw something else up, and then week after that you screw something else up, you're like this, and that's a slope that doesn't really, it's very hard to get going back in the right direction. Yeah. And so I have always resisted making major changes. Like That's why I did the second channel, to like kind of screw around with stuff and just see what, what works. And I think we're all a little afraid to do that. And so, yeah, I mean, obviously, retro this guy like, uh -oh. has never even realized, what, am I not on anymore? Uh, you 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 glitched for just a second. Sorry. No one is in that I'm not you know doing this that it's that it's changed, but it was obviously an important thing to do. Um, but we're all just a little nervous about it. I think if you ask the other guys, they tell you. I've heard stories about guys who leave old bank accounts open that they never use anymore because that's the bank account hooked up to their YouTube, and they're just terrified to change the account because maybe a payment won't come in or something. It's like, geez. Yeah. Well, I mean, I think it's YouTube's hard because it's like a nameless, faceless bit of so you know you can't. It's not like you could call someone at YouTube 
I mean, you you can if you're a high yeah. enough creator, but the person you're calling is not, they have no real power to really do anything. You know, they could give you best practices right. or fucking whatever, but it's not like they're, it's not like, it's not like they're going to help you beat YouTube. You know, that shit ain't happening. So, right. so the most right. important and, and thing for any creator is to like have that exit strategy, which I think yours is very smart. You're, you're on, you're on your way. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And I, I hope that's true. We'll see. Yours is yours is, is brilliant as well. I can't believe you're already so full. That's crazy. I'm, gonna, that's yeah, I'm, that's I'm about to be a landlord. It's going to be chill as fuck. We and we had, you know, we hired this dude who seems very smart and knowledgeable uh, to do a like a real thorough forensic analysis of our channel for like best practices and like thumbnails and best, t you know, tag words and stuff like that. And seems like Seems like the guy knows what he's talking about. So, mm -hmm. unlike you, I'll share my findings. Um, and <laughs> with, no, with, no, with, no, with other people, we'll share them with other people. No, no, no. Um, but uh, no, it's it seems so. So, some folks may see a few things like, "Oh shit, is Farrah really using fucking contrasting lettering in thumbnails now? That's oh. a thing." I mean, I think studies show that it's like a fucking five to seven percent return improvement for just doing that, wow. and over the life of video, that can be, you know, a lot. It's a good wow, video. interesting. Yeah, yeah. You got anything coming up uh, other than more cars and bids? Uh, to What are you throwing down in January other than the Metro video? Anything exciting Metro, you want to promote? What else? What else? I did a – oh, you know, I did a Volga, the Russian car. You know what I, <laughs> That's nice. You know what I shot that you would like? I shot an 86 Max. You remember those? They would talk to you. It was that, you know, the door is a jar. Your door, door is, is a jar. Yeah, I, I didn't I, – yep. why – why didn't they just say open? Right. <laughs> what? What? Like, why a jar? Where? And where did that word enter the vernacular to the point where like your car is saying it to you every day? That's upscale. Right. <laughs> like, were people just saying that in the eighties and like we no, just forget? No. It was, <laughs> it was, it no, was pretentious. crazy even then. Yeah, it's very pretentious. But that was a cool shoot. Uh, it was interesting to see what the Japanese thought luxury would would be like you know they thought that talking cars and you know what else that car has it has those old seats with like buttons in them that like are overstuffed like gm cars had in the 80s you know like red those dark red yes. chairs. yeah well, yeah and the, the maserati by turbo like, yeah real yeah. fluffy yeah right and there, there was this thought apparently among the japanese oh if the americans are doing it as a luxury then this must be what americans want right and so that car had it too, and it's funny to see in a Mac because now you kind of think of those as like, you know, sort of sporty person types, and you know, not like a car with button overstuffed button seats. But that was they didn't know at the time; they were just throwing darts at the dartboard. I haven't seen in forever any kind of decent condition Maxima SE like sport. Remember yeah. them like white oh, yeah. dials, five spokes, like nice and yeah. clean. I haven't seen one of those on the road at all in any kind of condition in fucking years. Where don't did they all go? All, don't you think they all got modded? And uh, well, you know, actually, man, it's interesting. Yes, do you spend a lot of time in Riverside? <laughs> <laughs> More than I'm comfortable admitting, actually. <laughs> I'm in Azusa like weekly. <laughs> you see, are you really? Why? Because that's where you go to get to the canyons, man. Oh yeah, okay. the the base of the mountains. Yeah, yeah. The, the towns along the the mm -hmm. like Sunland, Tahunga. I'm out. I'm out there all the time. I the, see all the, kinds of fun shit. I was just in Lancaster, uh, visiting my my Ferrari in the in the midst of a service, and the shit you see parked in front of houses out there. It's like, oh, I get it. They yeah. live out here so they can have a yeah. hundred thousand dollars into their fox body. This makes total sense. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what it's like there. That's exactly right. You go to some of these towns, and I mean, I go to some of these places in LA, and I'm just like blown away. Like, oh, this is where the Dodge Neons are. <laughs> <laughs> I thought they were all in junkyards. That's not true. There's this guy. This guy has four of them in his driveway in various states of disrepair. This is where they all work. <laughs> right around the corner from here, there's someone who's got three of those late '80s boxy Camrys, in oh. all all super mint. They're just just right racking them up down there <laughs> god how bizarre like why do know. people how does this happen i have absolutely no hey, idea you know what Matt, can we discuss something since i'm here <laughs> i'd like to bring something up with you a couple you of weeks ago a white 
1998 Mercedes Benz G320 Cabriolet sold on uh-huh. a different a different website, and it sold for a lot of money. <laughs> a lot of money. Uh, a reasonable amount of money. Now, a lot. A lot, I mean, a lot of money. Those of us who owned these vehicles felt that it was a pretty, a pretty good number. Now, <laughs> <laughs> we felt it was actually undervalued at that price. Yeah, but. yeah. And you, you were like angry about this. You were like, "This person overpaid." This the is the tweet ridiculous. said, "Motherfucking crack pipe." That's what the tweet <laughs> said. <laughs> yeah, <now. laughs> right, something like that. Now, yeah. I didn't feel that the price was that out of the realm to be perfectly honest with you. These are rare vehicles. They don't transact that often. I think one of the problems that I'm finding, especially in cars and bids, like we sold a, an FJ cruiser for 50 grand and you thought you tweeted about that. You're like, that's insane. I think that it's interesting to me. Some enthusiasts are willing to think that some prices of cars are insane mm-hmm. and not, and not others. Like people see an, a really clean E39 M5 sell for a hundred and they're like, yeah, that seems about right. And I'm mm-hmm. sitting there like, what? Meanwhile, a very perfect G-Wagon convertible, the finest car ever made, that sells for 190. That seems like a reasonable thing. Okay, rate. well, I'll defend my position. That's fine. Um, oh, well, let me issue a correction. I didn't say motherfucking crack pipe. I said crack motherfucking pipe. Oh, they'll issue that correction. Um, <laughs> One, I thought the 50000 bucks for the FJ was ridiculous because I believe in paying money for experiences. I do not believe that you can buy new or newer today the experience of driving a BMW E39 M5, whereas you can buy a Toyota 4Runner brand new for $50,000 that is largely exactly the same experience as driving an FJ Cruiser. Um, I've driven FJ cruisers. They're terrible. They're just, te- well, they're just okay. the regular two, old trucks. Two things, two things. Number one, <clears throat> what if you had a hundred million dollars? You know, does it matter at that point? Like what if you were, you is just that, didn't is that care? who bought the FJ well, cruiser? Somebody with a hundred million dollars? Is that? No, but Doug I, hopes that people with a hundred million are interested. <clears throat> all right. More to the point, Doug, that G, the G Cabrio. Okay. That I was talking about. And that and is an about. experience worth paying for. Listen, the G Cabrio was a six cylinder, not an eight cylinder like yours. And if I recall, can you scroll down, please, Zach? It had 151,000 fucking miles on it, Doug. That is not a collector's item. Not with 151K on it, bro. It is federalized. There are a hundred of these in North America. A hundred. That's it. That's Bro, the whole thing. in three years, you can import any one of these that you want. You're going to pay that premium for three years? They what an idiot. They pull in Europe. They're pulling 100 in Europe still. They, they bring insane money even over there. 100 is just over half of this, dude. Well, you know, maybe the place <laughs> over... <laughs> but Look, I if, think... it, if, this, if we were talking about a 50,000-mile V8 car... We wouldn't be having this discussion if we were talking about your car, or even if it was seventy-five or eighty thousand miles and it was nice. You're talking about the smaller motor with a shitload of miles on it. It's a ton of money. Hundred and fifty-one thousand miles, Doug. Come on. I know, but these cars come up for sale once a year. Like that's it. They come up truly one time a year. A power top convertible G wagon, and. You got to If you want it, you want a car. You, you want a car. You want to buy a car. I mean, or are you gonna wait next year and wait again till it comes up again? It ain't happening. This thing, when mine sold, I another carb certified one. One more carb certified one has sold since I bought mine over almost two years ago. That's it. It's impossible to find these things. I think it's impossible to find them if you only look in a few places. I think if I sent Sirio on the hunt for one, he could find me one in 48 hours that's nicer than this for less money. Well, Which is yeah, what happened, might- by the way, with my 328. I got into three different uh, in- in- auctions on my 328. The auctions went fucking way too high way too high all three cars sold for way too much money and i sent serio finding me a 328 and he found me three different cars in three different non-red colors all for between 15 and twenty thousand dollars less than the cars on the other auction site that will not be named yeah i mean 
I think people you are know, lazy, and if you fucking spend the time looking for the right car, you don't have to spend that much money. If you want to, you want to be know, part of our buy it now culture. Sure, pay out the ass for a hundred fifty thousand mile G wagon. Yeah, it's Amazon Enjoy Prime, yourself. where you, you know you pay more for something that you could you could get cheaper if you went to the actual website where they sell it. Yeah, it goes through Amazon Prime. It's convenient. You know, one of the things that we have discovered with cars and bids is kind of precisely you're saying, Chase. You really want to those that do the best are the ones that are hard to replicate. So like that FJ Cruiser with no miles, it's actually pretty hard to find a, a no mile FJ. A Focus ST, it's a little bit easier to find, and so it's harder to you know generate a huge number. Sure. But when a car comes in that we know, like we have an SLS on the site right now with only 600 miles, those are hard, and it's red. Those are hard to find. I mean, and it really ultra low mile, you know, in that color. If you want that kind of thing, it's not going to come up again. And you're right. I mean, I think um, good stuff people pay a lot more for. But 328s are more common than the G cab, the greatest car ever made. And so, you know, maybe there's a reason to pay a little bit more. I look, I, you know, I don't I, I am not opposed. I, I agree. I, I, I know what you paid for yours. And I'm and I'm not saying that you overpaid. I think you got a great car and I think it's a, probably a wise investment. I think that one, two people or more people got in way over their head and didn't want to lose and ended up paying too much money. Sorry. Yeah, that, that's. That's probably what happened, but you know, <laughs> it's a hundred and fifty thousand mile G wagon, man. That's a lot. Well, this also it's goes to the, the discussion of uh, experience versus rarity. Like Doug's right. I mean, if, it's, if there's only a hundred in the country for now, then people see that as being very scarce. But what you, you're saying about Forerunner versus FJ, it's like if 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 people look at the FJ and go, "What a great vehicle! Look at it, what it can do!" and that's why they think it's worth a lot. You're like, "But there's five other vehicles that do the same shit, and yeah. you can see out of them." The FJ is not a unique experience, right? Really. And then and the real money comes when those two things intersect. You know, scarcity yeah. plus yeah. usefulness. Yeah, that's or, right. Or that's love. exactly right. That's exactly right. The really really scarce stuff, the really special stuff. That's what really brings all the money, um, because you just can't replicate. We have cars on the site from time to time where it's like. We're going to take it and we're going to give whatever reserve the seller wants because this is one of those good luck finding another. Like you just, you won't. I mean, they're just difficult to re replicate this this type of vehicle. And and those are always the ones, they're definitely always the ones that do the best. Yeah, I mean, look, uh, people who have spent time looking around for one and then one comes up and, you know, you maybe you've invested your own time into digging around, but maybe you haven't invested a professional's time into digging around. Um and, and I get it. Rare shit. It makes sense. I just think in that one case and some other cases that I was a part of, cars sold, people paid too much. And that's and fucking whatever. It's their money. Who cares? But, you know, I I was like, I think that is, that's just too much money for that. Well, whatever. Well, I take a slightly different stance, which is that now <laughs> mine is worth double what I paid for it. So I'm going to, go. I'm going right. to, hopefully, okay. what I <laughs> You You're not believe. exactly impartial, so I'm going to award 10 points to Max <laughs> because, you know, you, uh... No, uh, yeah, uh, yeah. Look at that. It, listen, you know, you're the GameStop are... CEO right now going, look, I think this is a yeah. totally, you know, fair right. assessment of what our company's worth. Right, 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 <laughs> yeah. right, right. Silver's a better color, V8's a better engine, and yours has a lot less miles. Uh, yours, yeah. is, yours is probably worth the kind of money that that one got. And mine is carb certified. There's only nine that are carb certified, one of which is Kendall Jenner. So you got me, Kendall Jenner, and then, you know, seven other people. Oh, really? There's two in Venice, just so you know. Really? There's a black With, and a silver. They have California plates. Are they what? Do they have California plates? Uh, at least the black one does. I have not seen on the silver. Yeah. I think they were all registered in Southern California. I think every single one of the carb certified ones. There may have been one in the in the Bay Area, but I think they were all in Southern California. There's yeah. two in San Diego. Oh, I've never seen the other one, but it's in it's in Del Mar. The, yeah, the 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 black one is driven around. I think pretty much as a daily driver in Venice. I see. I see it all the time. Yeah, I daily cool. mine. I drive mine more than any other car. I'm putting ten thousand a year on it. Yeah, I mean, whatever. At that kind of appreciation, now that you know you can sell it with 150,000 <laughs> fucking miles on it, and some schmuck will buy it. <laughs> yeah. Do you think yeah, the person that. I mean, that's the best argument for you. The best argument for you is if we now, if we've now learned that all G Wagon cabs are immune to mileage for the next three years I can until just drive you can it. start bringing in the Euro cars. Right, I shouldn't even put my I shouldn't even put miles on my other cars. I should only right. drive this because it's yeah. actually gaining in value as I drive it. It doesn't yeah. matter. Yeah, 
<laughs> do you think that the person who bought that car for 190 grand knows that you can import them in three years, or do you think they were just had too many whiskeys and were just clicking? I think it's someone who has so much money they don't give a fuck because there's there's yeah, certainly and, enough of them. And you know the people who I have met who own these cars. And it is, by and large, a group of terrible people. (laughs) 99 of whom have probably heard of you and now are listening to this. That's hilarious. If if you're watching with one of these, I don't mean you. It's the other people who are terrible. It's all 11 other other people. (laughs) Not you, Kendall. It's the other Jenner. No, but the the people who I know who own them, and I mean, you can imagine the type of person who wants a convertible G wagon. It's just the con- the the that costs that much money. It's like the crux of a million different terrible things. Right. But um, you're the but, only person that owns one. Ironically, everyone yeah. else is dead fucking serious about their G wagon. But you know, <laughs> all the other people who I've met who own them have yeah, they've got more money than God. They don't give a shit. They don't care what it costs. This is what they wanted, and no, then no one else makes anything similar to it. So this is what they got. I will say there is one in Lake Tahoe that has like two hundred fifty thousand miles that the guy bought new. And I would like to meet him and be like, just, yeah. just, just casually shake hands one day to each other and walk off. You know, we're the two. We're the ones who are like enthusiasts <laughs> about the car. <laughs> totally. And not just, you know, driving around because they think it looks cool. And I will give you that uh, it is it is unique in the, uh, are, is there any <laughs> other power soft top luxury SUV ever? ever? Yes. There is, Matt. There oh, are the two. Evoke. The Evoke. There, right. There is the Range Rover Evoke Cabriolet, a fantastic automobile. <laughs> and that, is, that is Jake Tapper's daily driver. Something to keep in mind the next time you see what? him. What? <laughs> yeah. And the <sighs> Nissan Murano Cross Cabriolet. No, no I said luxury. Right. I said luxury. No, what? You no. don't think that's luxury? <laughs> Only the one I sent you the photo two weeks ago with the Bentley badging. I just took away three points, Doug. Dude, oh, last no. week, uh, last week I texted Doug a photo of this. I was on Abbott Kinney, and there was a family of five adults rolling around, bumping beats in a cross cabriolet, top down, Nissan badges removed, Bentley badges applied. <laughs> they didn't that seem was, <laughs> like they were joking. That was a luxury SUV. You <laughs> like they were joking. <laughs> Oh man, I would have loved to see that. God, that it was oh, it was so terrible. <laughs> oh man, well I hope I can uh, hang out in person soon. Uh, virtual is fine, in person's better. Yeah. Uh, maybe maybe we could do some off roading, and we'll just I'll just pass you a plastic wrapped like CB radio or walkie, and then we'll go. We'll just drive our SUVs up the trail without the actually being I, in the, the same airspace. I'm vaccinated, with the moment I'm vaccinated, I'm going to come up there, and we're going to. I still want to do a video on your. <laughs> it's incredibly creepy when you're like, the moment I'm vaccinated, I'm going to come up there and. And your Wi-Fi drops out. <laughs> I'm gonna come up there, and we're gonna. I, I still want to do a video on your space, even though you. It sounds like you don't even need any promo. You've already filled. But I would like to no, see. No, but and I check still like to show my friends around because I'm proud of what we built here, and we're the only people who have done a bunch of things. And you can come and see them in person. It's like, look at this fucking thing. It's really cool. You go up the lift and you go, holy shit, this is really, really high up here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, it's great. We love, we want to have you up here really soon. Um, are, aren't you, um, aren't you uh, married to someone in the medical profession? Does that entitle you to a spot, to a jump in the <laughs> line? I wish that it would entitle me to a spot. That would be nice. The, the spouse of someone in the medical profession. But unfortunately, no. it, it does not. Womp womp. <laughs> well, I don't know about you, but I did the online calculator that the New York Times had, where you put yeah. in some things about yourself and it tells you where you were in line. I was 284 millionth. Uh, <laughs> 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 in line. <laughs> it might be a oh. minute. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I guess so. This isn't going to happen in time soon. Uh, it's not a priority uh, for them. <laughs> no. No, we're um, not. But uh, congratulations, Cars and Bids is fucking making moves. Seems like you are you are making a big a big a success uh, beyond the YouTubes. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate that. It's been great. It's been yeah. Great. 
and uh, we would uh, we will have you in person as soon as you uh, get your vaccinations, and we get our vaccinations, and no, whatever, you know what I mean. We're having we're doing the thing if you, the, the the test results thing. If you want to do that, that's fun. Larry Webster's is, coming in with these quick these quicky little tests. They're like they're like quick ten minute tests. I don't know. Those are great. We need it seems good. Yeah, I know. I was like, what do you mean you have 10 minute tests? He's like, I'll bring you a box of them. I was like, you have a box of 10 minute tests? What the fuck is this? Is this what Haggerty's doing over there? He's like, yeah, no, I ordered them from insert any other country. <laughs> yeah, Madagascar right. shipped them over. Yeah, right. Exactly. Um, obviously, Doug Demuro on YouTube, Doug Cars and Bids, Doug Demuro on all the social medias. This motherfucker's got an audience so big, he doesn't need me to promote him at all. And yet. We will, because we love him. Thanks, Doug. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Thank you for your time. Give your dog some scratches for us. I will. And uh, we will uh, We will catch up again soon. Bye. Cool. Later. <laughs>